In today's video, I'm gonna share with you spring home decor ideas that are not cheap or cheesy looking. Keep watching. Hello, 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 how's everybody doing today? Welcome back to Ramona Home. I'm so excited you're here today because on today's video, I'm gonna share with you home decorating ideas for spring. They are not cheesy or cheap looking. I really want to encourage you guys to have a beautiful home this spring season. And I wanna share with you interior design ideas that will make your home look expensive. So if you are interested in home decor ideas that are not cheap or cheesy looking, please stay tuned. Don't forget to like this video and share with a friend. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing because you will not want to miss any of the spring decor ideas that we're gonna be sharing here Ramona at home. On this video, we're gonna make a wreath. I'm gonna show you how to decorate the mantle and we're gonna set a beautiful, gorgeous spring tablescape that I think you will like it. But we're gonna start with the mantle, so stay tuned. All right, everyone. So the very first thing I wanna talk to you about is creating a beautiful floral bouquet for your mantle or your entryway table. Now here I've created a gorgeous bouquet of viburnum, which is one of my favorite flowers. And as I mentioned to you before, this year I'm gonna use a lot of this lime green creams and whites for my decorating for spring and summer. So I just basically went ahead and started adding the viburnums to my bouquet right here. And all there is is five of these stems crossed in the middle. And then I went ahead and added some of the viburnums right here to the top. It's super simple. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and add one of these uh, greeneries all the way in the crown of your bouquet to extend the shape all the way up. As you guys can see, it really helps it curve into the clock and it really makes a statement. This was so simple to make and it really makes a statement, but now I'm gonna take you on a little quick trip to Shinoda Design Center where I'm going to show you the flowers I'm gonna get to create a gorgeous floral wreath for my front door to match this bouquet, so come with me. All right, everyone, so we have arrived at Shinoda Design Center for our florals, and I just want you to see the variety of florals they have right here. I'm gonna put together a beautiful wreath for my front door, and as I told you before, I'm going to keep it very, very neutral. So for that, what I picked is some white roses, some um, ivory roses, I'm gonna do some ivory hydrangea, we're gonna pick some green, I think these are hops, and I'm looking also for a green viburnum and white lilies. We're gonna put all of that together on a grape by wreath and I'm gonna put it on my front door. So this is going to be so much fun and I think you're gonna learn a few tricks, so keep watching. All right, everyone, before I start making this beautiful wreath for our front door, I wanna mention a few things and those are the tools that I always use. Now I wanna point out, this is a hot glue pellet skillet that I purchased at a thrift store, but they do sell these skillets for hot glue pellets. And this is what the hot glue pellets look like. Um, you put them in here, you turn it on, and then it'll melt them up for you. The other thing is this pick machine, and this what it does is um, puts a little steel pick on your stem so they can really latch on into the form right here. And these are the picks that are used for, let me see if I can do one right here. You go ahead and you fold it like this, and then it'll put this really cool steel pick. So all of these are tools for floristry and I really do recommend. My wire cutters came from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's but quite a few years ago, so I don't know if they still have them available. So I'm gonna move my machine right here. Now all of the florals that I'm gonna use today, as you guys saw, uh, they came from Shinoda Design Center. So I'm just gonna get started. So what I like to do when I have bushes like these rose foliages, I like to divide it in three because it's a lot of product and I like to do it all at once. Now I have a few wreath 
DIYs. As you guys can see on the screen right now, the one that I did last year it was so beautiful. It was really colorful. But this year I wanna stay within all greens, whites, and creams. Very monochromatic, very fresh for this time of the year. I really do think that if you keep it more in the monochromatic, you can carry it all the way from spring through summer. So on this particular instance, if I wanted to, I could um, add some apples or some limes to it and make it look fresher, which we might in the future. But as you guys can see, I cut all of the stems and instead of having just a few stems, you have quite a, quite a few out of them. So once again, you get your pick machine right here and then you pick your stem. You go ahead and dip this into your glue. Now, if you guys been following this channel, you know that what goes up must come down. So if you're gonna go ahead and add a stem right there, then we immediately have to go ahead and do one on the bottom. And I just go ahead and pick my stem right here. Let me get rid of my lacy Susan because she's really getting on my way. There you go. You kind of have to have some grip. Then you dip this into your glue right here and then it goes down. Now keep in mind that when you're making a wreath, you have to go on a clock motion all the time. It doesn't matter what flower or foliage you are inserting, you have to go on that motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one here on the side. And remember what goes up must come down. What happens on the left happens on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab yet another one right here. I'm gonna add a pick. Dip it into my glue and be generous. This glue is really meant to be on the outside. It's really gonna hold out to the weather, whether it's snowing for the holidays or it is hot during the summer. It's meant, was fabricated to stand up and hold on to the weather. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one right here and take note that I am inserting one stem at a time and it's all going the same way. Now, the other thing that I like to do is that I like to add one foliage and one flower at a time. So this particular occasion, we have about five to seven flowers that we're going to add all in white and green. However, I am going to add one foliage at a time. So as you guys can see, I'm just adding this going clock motion. I'm gonna speed it up and I'll be right back to add the next step. Keep watching. I wanna take a second right now to invite you guys to come and join me on my Instagram account for daily Insta stories, behind the scenes, and all of the things you'll get to see here on YouTube. All of my social media links are gonna be linked down below in the comment section below, so come join me. Now let's get back to the video. All right, as you guys can see, I finished adding all of the rose foliage on my wreath going all clock motion, but there's still a lot of dead space to it. And for me, there's nothing better to fill in that space than boxwood. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut them all at once because I am going to go ahead and add all of them. So I have two types of boxwood that I got from Shinoda and I'm gonna go ahead and use all of this product right here. Now to fill in these ones, I like to do sets of twos because it all fill in my space better. So as you guys can see, I just added two and then I like to get my bend to kind of fluff them. I'm gonna dip into my glue right here, very generous, always be generous. And we're gonna start over adding closer to the form. And as you guys can see, that's helping me fill in. Now remember, what goes up must come down and what happens on the left happens on the right. And that is a rule that I just <laughs> literally came up with when I was learning floristry to kind of remember, to help me remember the rules of how to balance. So that's more like to have a balance and result. So I'm gonna continue to add these two, but sets of two and just giving it a little twist or a bend. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all the spots, I'll be right back. Okay, so I wanna point out real quick, this is a fact that you guys have to check every time that you're making a wreath. See how I'm closer to here? If I was to step away from it, you're gonna see this dead space right here, like it hasn't been worked on. And that's because we tend to go like this into a wreath, but we forget this zone right here. So always, 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 go back and check your arm zone. That's what I call my arm zone so to fill in and to make it look just as full as the rest of the wreath because you don't want it to be empty spaces. All right, so I have just a few more that I'm going to add 
right here, these two boxwoods. I think I have one more. As you guys can see, it's filling in. Now, the other thing I have that I am absolutely in love with, it's this beautiful fern, and look how dainty and how dangly this is. How fun is that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it into bigger chunks. And the beauty about these particular stems is that you can always just play with it. Like I'm going to add all of this together. So I'm just going to cut right there and I'm going to pick all of this together to kind of make different bundles. And as you guys can see, it has wires. You can just go ahead and dip into your glue. Be generous with it. And I'm going to add right here to my wreath form. All right, so I'm going to add two more and then we're going to get started with the flowers. So keep watching. All right, everyone. So these are some of the flowers that I selected for this wreath. I'm going to go ahead and put them down, make sure that I don't lose my wire cutters because I need those. So I've selected some of these really pretty cream hydrangea and I have three, four, five, six. I got a selection of garden roses in cream and white. And then also I got some really beautiful white cabbage roses. And what really is gonna make it pop is going to be this really pretty viburnum, which is the very first thing that I'm gonna start with. What I want you to do and want you to think is that viburnum really does grow really wild. I remember when I lived in Kansas, we used to have a viburnum bush. So you really have to like touch every head. We want it to be a little wild and fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this viburnum and I'm gonna go ahead and add a pick so it really hangs on to my wreath form. And remember, it has to be really wild looking. So uh, to give it more character, just go ahead and bend it every way you want. And this also is gonna help us to elongate the shape of our wreath. So I'm gonna start always on the top, but remember what happens on the top has to happen on the bottom. And I just really recommend to go ahead and give them a little bend. All right, so I want to recommend if you guys have not seen the beautiful lemon wreath that I did last year, I really, really recommend you watch that one next. I'm gonna link it up right here, right now. And um, it was so much fun. It was yellows and whites and creams with a lot of lemons. It was just so cute. So if you like wreath ideas, I really do think that you would enjoy that particular one. And I just wanna show you something real quick. This is what this comes out of looking out of the box with no flower look, grows like that. So like I said, just go ahead and give the heads a little bent because that's more like it. So I want this viburnum to really elongate the shape of my wreath. I'm gonna start with four. So I'm gonna go my four corners like that. And I'm gonna add one more right here. I got 10 of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I add other flowers first to make sure that I have plenty to go around and remember to always fluff as you go. All right, so this is going to be the last viburnum that I add. And I'm gonna add it right here, being really generous with my glue. And go on the shape of the, the clock. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure they go I go on the form like that. And see how that has viburnum all the way around. Like I said, I'm gonna save some of them to add at the end. The next thing I wanna add is gonna be the hydrangea. So I'm gonna get some of this hydrangea. Now, these are really thick on the stem. Let me see how easy they are. Oh, they're actually really easy to cut. Um, these ones don't need the pick because they're pretty thick right here. And with hydrangea, when you're using hydrangea on any wreath, it really, I really recommend that you use it as close as you can to the form to start to fill in some of those blank spots. As you guys can see, I'm gonna use six. And I'm super excited about the lilies because I love, 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 love lilies on a wreath. I have some lilies and I have some other green flowers. So as you guys can see, I just push it into the form. Let it stand right here. I'm gonna add all of them going motion some of these suckers are really hard to play with and then just go ahead and give it a little bend like this and I'm gonna go ahead right here and just insert and push it in I have one more 
I'm gonna dip this into my glue. I'm gonna open up right here. And at this point, what you want to do is cover some of these spots by adding a thicker flour, like this hydrangea. I'm gonna add one right here. I feel like it needs a hydrangea right here. So go ahead and dip into your glue. Find the spot and just push it in. Look at that, how pretty is that? All right, let me see. I think I'm gonna put one right here. Hydrangea is one of my favorite flowers. So leave me a comment below in the comment section below and let me know what is your favorite flower to decorate with or if you'd like to have fresh flowers in your home, which one is your favorite? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna add is some of these cabbage roses and I also want them. Remember the bigger the head of the flower, the closer it has to go into the wreath form because if you were to do fresh flowers, it would not hold the weight, you know, up here, the stem, let me cut it real quick. The stem wouldn't hold the weight up here because it would be heavy on the head and it would just break. These ones I do need to pick and so what I'm going to do to save myself some time, look how fast this is you guys. If I was doing this at work, I could literally get like 10 reads done in one day because <laughs> you just prep, it's all prep work. Oops, I forgot to cut this one. I'm gonna cut this stem right here. And then you clean at the end because if you guys could just see the mess I have right here on my, by my feet, it's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dip these guys into my glue, being generous, and then look for a spot right here, remember, closer to the form. So I have five. I'm gonna do one right here and always going in the same direction. I'm never gonna get tired. As long as I continue to make videos for YouTube, about floral design, I will continue to repeat the instructions because that's how I learned how to do flowers, just by repeating myself. What happens on the left happens on the right, Ramon, and what goes up must come down. Look how pretty that looks. And I'm gonna add one right here on the bottom because you want them to go balanced. And remember the adding just one flower at a time really does help with your balance. All right, so I'm gonna add one right here. Sometimes you just have to move the foliage to insert your flower. Look how pretty that is, oh my goodness. All right, so then I have some of these rose bundles. This is kind of like a, a garden rose. I think it's so cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of them. You wanna leave all of the foliage on them, so I'm gonna make sure that I cut right under the foliage. So we can use some of that foliage also to cover some of the spots. I have two different kinds. I have a cream one and I have a white one. So cutting both of them and also make sure that you get rid of all these pesky tags. I cannot wait to show you guys what this is gonna look like. I don't even know what it's going to look like, but if it's going to look like anything like how I imagine it to be, it's gonna be really pretty because this spring season, I'm doing all whites and creams inside the house. And I just love how fresh, you know, after the holidays, there's nothing like just like a feeling of airiness in the home. And so that's what I want this spring season for my home. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what is your spring color. What have you picked for your spring colors? All right, so I'm gonna take a second now to pick all of them. You guys will see how fast we're gonna get to do this. In other ones, this is more of a splurge, but I know this wreath will carry me all the way through summer. Like I said, later on, I'm gonna add some apples and other things. All right, so now I'm gonna separate these guys. I have another tag right here. My goodness. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add these guys. And as you guys can see, these are a little longer than the cabbage roses. So I want them to fly further away from my form like this, like that. And remember to always just add one style at a time. Dip. Be sure to grab onto the foliage so they don't go in the glue. I'm gonna add this guy right here. Look how pretty that is. Okay, I'm gonna add one right here. It's all about the balance, you guys. All about the balance. Look at that, how pretty is that? This also would be really pretty for a wedding. I love white and green. It's my favorite combination when I do flowers for weddings. I always just recommend this color combination because it's fresh, it's clean looking. 
All right, so I'm gonna add one right here. Give it a little bend. Dip into my glue. Add right here, like that. So I'm gonna proceed to these longer ones too. And what I like about these ones, because they really have a thicker wire that I can go in there and use. So I'm gonna add one here coming down, like that. And I'm gonna add one right here. Just let your eye dictate where the flower wants to live. Like this. Perfect. I want it to be a little bit more wild because it does have some of these wild roses. So I want it to be a little bit more disheveled because to me also that's really pretty when you have a wilder look. If you have wild roses and garden roses, then I think like it needs to be a little bit more on this path than like very constructed. If you have bigger flowers like this right here, then you do want to group them together because they make more of an impact when they're grouped together. But when you have roses like this right here, you do want them to be a little bit on the wilder side. All right, so I'm gonna add one right here coming down. Right here. Like that. How pretty is this looking? So far, so good. Let me see, what else do I have? I have, I'm gonna add a few more of these viburnums. I feel like I need one coming out right here. I'm gonna get ready to uh, get the lilies and the rest of the flowers and I'll be right back. Keep watching. All right, you guys, so the last two flowers that I have that I'm going to add are some of my favorite flowers which is this Casablanca lily and the little buds. Now, Casablanca lilies and hydrangea is perhaps my favorite combination that I love in my house and that I love to play with. However, when you do fresh flowers, you always cut the pollen out because your flower looks cleaner that way. And then also because in real life, this pollen will stain anything that it touches, anything on its path. I remember we actually, what we do to pull this fresh is like we go like this and we pull it. Well, by the end of the day, um, your hands are just absolutely torn and all dyed and it's just everything like us, everything that is on its path that it touches. Plus look, look how pretty it looks when you cut that out. It just looks cleaner. The flower looks cleaner and that's why you do it in the world of floristry. You always clean this pollen out. All right, so I have these beautiful Casablancas and I also have this really pretty dainty flower that I'm gonna use as an accent, but I'm gonna start with the Casablanca. I'm gonna go ahead and cut short like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fluff it, make sure the dab bud shows. Oh, I'm gonna add a pick. And look what this is going to do. To me, there is nothing more elegant than this beautiful Casablanca. Check this out. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. I just love them. And they smell so good in real life. If you were to get fresh Casablancas, it is my favorite flower in the world. So I'm gonna add one right, put it right here. And just let it hang out further than any other flower. This is kind of like your showstopper. So you want it to be as far out as you can. And you want it, you want it to be at the end of any floral arrangement. This is the flower that you want to wait till the end to add. I'm going to add one right here. So open up all of your foliages. Just insert your Casablanca. Like this, and look at that. It just sits on top of everything else. And it is so beautiful and elegant. I have, I think I'm going to add five of this beautiful flower. I cannot wait to read your comments and know which of what flower is your favorite. I know we all have different tastes. Hydrangea being my favorite, I know a lot of people do not love hydrangea like I do, but I know a lot of people that love hydrangea. I know a lot of people that love roses. To me, roses are pretty, but not as gorgeous as look what that does. It's just not as elegant to me as other flowers there are. But you know what they said, we all have different tastes. So, all right, let me see. I'm gonna add one. Oh, that is so pretty. 
so so pretty all right i'm gonna add one right here along with this one sometimes it's good if you have like sets you know sometimes i like to work in sets of threes twos and ones so like right here i'm just gonna go ahead and add this other one like that and adding a set of two and i feel like we need one right here so i'm gonna add this so pretty you want it to be a little thicker on the top because that's the top let me see i feel like we need one right here with this hydrangea so i'm getting some of my glue gonna add it right here oh my gosh look how pretty that is and i'm gonna add the last one here with this group of flowers wouldn't this be perfect for a wedding i think it would be so gorgeous All right, so I'm gonna add this one right here with this hydrangea group. Look how pretty it just sits on top of everything else. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna add is going to be this dainty flower and I'm just gonna add it popping out, going in a clock motion. And I'll be right back with you and show you the end result. Keep watching. Now, how fun was that, you guys? I cannot wait to read your comments, so leave me a comment down below and let me know what do you think about this wreath, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna take you into my dining room and I'm gonna show you how to set a gorgeous tablescape for spring, summer to celebrate a new season. Come with me. Okay, so I wanna mention real quick, I chose this beautiful white and green tablecloth that I had from quite a few years ago, and you guys know that I like to use a white set of dishes. I think it is a must have to have white dishes at your house because you can set basically any tablescape. To give it a little bit of texture, I'm gonna add a napkin and this one it's a floral napkin and that's just to kind of color block both of my salad and my dinner plate. So I'm gonna put that down like this and I'm gonna set the other white plate for the salad on top of that. And I have selected this really beautiful Ralph Lauren napkin and I have a sheer lime green under it and it has a paisley color, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, you know they said the devil is on the details. I have this really cute knife rest that I bought at a store named Nell Hills quite a few years ago. And so to set your forks and your knives, remember that fork has four letters, just like the word left, and spoon and knife have five letters, just like the word right. So if you remember this, you'll always have a beautifully set table then i have brought these goblets that i purchased from ikea and as you guys can see just having a collection of items from high to low it really can create a beautiful tablescape now i'm going to show you a few options for centerpiece all right everyone so for the centerpiece i have something very simple which is this wooden box there's nothing but a block of foam right here. And then I cover it with this beautiful green moss. And what I like about this is because it's low, um, you could also do a floral arrangement on it, but because we're doing a spring summer theme that I want it to be very simple and elegant. And as you can see, all of the greens from the tablecloth to the napkins and the greenery on the centerpiece really make a statement and I love it. However, when I have guests over, I do like to, well, create a little bit of drama. So I have this beautiful potted plant that I'm gonna put right here in the middle. Now this could be for impact and it looks absolutely gorgeous. It just creates a lot of drama hive and it really creates a summer spring feel that I absolutely love. Now the other thing that I wanna to talk to you about is family heirlooms. Uh, Jameson's family give us this set of soul shakers and uh, these little trays, so I like to bring them out as well as this beautiful crystal bottle holder that really just creates a lot of elegance on your table. It doesn't matter what the theme is. So we just like to set that out to put our 
wine, it's kind of like a wine coaster. And as you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I do want to talk about how some things are from Ralph Lauren, some things are thrifted, some things are heirlooms. And that's what really creates a beautiful table setting. Now, if you think this is too high, of course, I would not leave it for um, dinner. But as you guys can see, you can just put this plant over here to the corner on your server and bring your low centerpiece. So you always have options. What do you think? All right, you guys, well, that's all I have for today. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to read your comments. So leave me a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite place in your home to decorate. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to link up a playlist right here for you to catch up with all of the spring decorating ideas from Ramona Home. Until next time, bye.